Good morning, Mark Sabbath, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Thursday, the 28th of September, 2017. So Maria finally pulling away from the east coast of the United States, and the effects are going with it. The wind and the surf along the east coast here going to calm down significantly today and tomorrow and into the weekend. And uh, water temperatures are still pretty warm down along the southeast coast. And so it should be a pretty good beach weekend. There will be some lingering surf issues, rip current threats probably pretty high, and we have to deal with whatever tries to become of this, which I'll talk about in just a moment. We have Hurricane Lee, still just under Category 3 intensity, and both of these combined, along with the rest of what has happened in September, has equated to the busiest September in terms of ACE index output or energy. Basically, we have had the biggest September hurricane-wise, uh, I think, in recorded history, uh, going back, you know, all the way to 1851. You know, you say, well, there weren't any satellites and so forth, uh, airplane reports back then. But this September, I think, just looking at what we have had, you could make the argument that it's been the strongest September in terms of hurricane energy output. I mean, two Category 5s, Irma, lasting as long as it did as a 185-mile-per-hour hurricane. Unbelievable. So will October be similar to September? Well, we'll have to wait and see about that. But uh, this is what the map looks like right now. Uh, again, Maria going to be exiting. Lee will be exiting. And let me just show you what this looks like the next five days uh, becoming sort of post-tropical here over the northeast Atlantic, so we don't really see this heading over towards um, the British Isles. And I'm going to keep an eye on it. We're still talking more than a week out, and we'll see what happens with Maria and the remnants of Lee here as to whether or not they do try to, uh, if this will ever pop up for me, if they do try to combine, if you will, and bring some uh, sort of extra tropical conditions over to parts of Europe. Uh, again, not explicitly showing up in the five day forecast for obvious reasons. As these systems uh, get out here into the northern Atlantic, they will weaken and become extra tropical in nature over that uh, colder water, and that'll be that. But we'll see. Sometimes these systems bring a lot of heat and energy out of the tropics, and it does get transferred over here to parts of northwest Europe with the UK being a, uh, a usual target, if you will, of some of that energy. Uh, I'll start looking at that, and we'll see what it... So my update tomorrow, I'll address that. We'll look at the global forecast system and the euro, and we'll check out what's going on, all right? So anyway, down in the uh, near Cuba, pretty big paragraph here, but basically what this is saying, um, there's a surface trough, which is simply a weakness in an area of convergence, it's like a low pressure area, but it's elongated, and it's at the surface, so there's some convergence going on there where air is coming together, trying to, you know, make something out of itself, if you will, and you can see that here on the satellite shot with the Hurricane Center information on top of it, and let's just look at the Western Atlantic uh, satellite loop, and I'll show you what we're talking about here, if this will load. Internet's being a little weird for me today, but that's all right. So here's the system down here. It's got a 40% chance of development once it moves up into this region over the next five days. And I think that what this is going to become is more of sort of your hybrid storm. Uh, there's plenty of warm water, which we're going to look at in just a minute right over here for it to tap into. But the upper level conditions, the overall support mechanism, just not the same as we have seen with these powerful Cape Verde hurricanes that we've had, Irma and Jose and Maria and Lee, those were all originating from tropical waves that came off of Africa. And, you know, this may have some, well, this is a surface trough, so it's not a tropical wave per se. Uh, and if we look at the vorticity signature, there's a little bit of energy right there, and you can see sort of the outline of this surface trough down here. And it's not quite well organized yet, but we're going to watch this. It's, you know, I've shown these before, especially earlier in the season when we were tracking 
these tropical waves coming off and we're wanting to see their structure and you can do that through this product from the University of Wisconsin their cooperative institute for meteorological satellite studies and you get to see the vorticity or the spin in the atmosphere and not only how much energy there is or how much spin uh, as indicated by the color scheme which is a lesson in and of itself as to exactly what that means but for the layperson I'm looking to see if it's round like you see here with Lee and Maria and then how much density of this spin or vorticity uh, do we have and for this system down here there's not much yet but I think it's going to try to take shape up here in the next few days and if we look at this in the model uh, this is the next five days from the 6Z GFS there goes Maria there goes Lee no problems anymore and then here comes this energy up through the Florida Straits bringing some rain inclement weather which is not good news for people trying to recover after Irma but then right off the coast here of Jacksonville maybe Flagler Beach area uh, this tries to consolidate into something where this sets up when it sets up etc is going to be what dictates the eventuality of what happens with this system now before anybody gets too worried about this becoming a hurricane or a big wind event that doesn't seem to be the concern just yet if it were to move farther out and then try to come back then maybe we could have longer for this to develop but I just don't see that in the modeling or in the overall setup but you never rule that out you know but I don't want to have this being blown into more than what it looks like it's going to be and that being said let me stop the animation let's look at this nice infographic from the National Weather Service out of Jacksonville and this really explains it it's basically like a strong nor'easter sort of this hybrid system um, with some tropical characteristics mixed in with you know your non-tropical characteristics and so the best way to describe it is kinda of like a hybrid storm uh, and you know maybe a subtropical storm we'll see but the bottom line for you folks what are the impacts gonna be and we really need to focus on that more and more going forward in our educational process you know naming these and the, the textbook and the classroom classification let's put it this way I don't know what the scientific name of course it would have been helpful before I did this analogy to look it up but this just popped into my head so bear with me you look at a uh, an alligator a 12 foot alligator and it has a scientific name whatever that is right we know it as an alligator uh, the American alligator and if it's going to attack you what are the options what what's the worst that could happen if you encounter a 12-foot alligator it'll eat you digest you and that's just horrifying right that's the worst thing that could happen um, there are other things that could happen maybe it just you know bites your foot off whatever right there's a whole range of impacts that the American alligator can have on you and who cares what the scientific name is if a scientist came along a biologist or whatever and said uh, oh that's a whatever the scientific name is and it's 12 feet long and my goodness it could eat you you know that's the part that you need to be focused on who cares what it's called if it's the American alligator if it's the whatever the impact is that it is very dangerous in that situation and we know that and we know when we see an alligator that it's dangerous and it has impacts that could be problematic right that goes without saying so my point is no matter what the storm system is called by meteorologists <clears throat> both in a weather service office and on television or the internet it doesn't matter in terms of the impacts that it's going to bring this system and as you can see wind gust you know 30s almost to 40 miles per hour right along the coast the possibility of coastal flooding especially during the times of high tide throughout next week and you know the shape of the coastline here being concave it's going to be easy to pile that water so 
interest down here at St. John's River, up through St. Mary's, St. Simon's Island, and maybe even up towards Savannah and Tybee, and then down the coast, St. Augustine, maybe down to Flagler, etc. Problems from the ocean, all right? Overwash maybe on some of the, the dunes that were impacted by Irma. So this is not something that is needed at all. And then you have the possibility of very heavy rainfall setting up, and that could lead to increased problems on the water table that's already very high. So we need to watch this not because of what it's going to be called, but because of the impacts that it's going to have in this area. And I'll be on top of that uh, very closely over the next several days. And as I mentioned yesterday, ironically, on Sunday... I'm flying down to Fort Lauderdale to uh, rent a vehicle and then go pick up all the equipment that I set out for Irma. So we'll see if for some reason it is stronger and more tropical in nature. And you see the water temperatures up here in this orange color that I'm coloring with orange as well. Uh, certainly still warm enough, 28 degrees Celsius, maybe higher than that. So there's enough energy through here for something to develop that's more concentrated, but I don't see it happening just yet. And if it does, then when I fly from Wilmington to Charlotte and then to Fort Lauderdale, I'll rent that SUV and come north and <laughs> delay picking up my equipment a little bit. But we'll, we'll cross that bridge, uh, literally if, if we need to. All right. But seriously, the water temperatures in the Atlantic basin, this is the extent of the 26 degrees Celsius isotherm. And that's just a fancy way of saying everything south and west of that line, except for a few pockets here and there. And let's just change this to blue, shall we? That'll make it a lot easier. Except for this area, and you know, a few pockets in here and over here. Um, everything's still warm enough to support hurricanes. And it is still hurricane season. That does not end on the calendar until November the 30th. And then down here... In the Caribbean and the Gulf, water temperatures are very warm, and in some cases, more than 30 degrees Celsius. And if we look at that from the upper ocean heat content perspective, which takes into consideration the depth of that warm water, then the warmest is right here in the Northwest Caribbean and the Western Caribbean as a whole. You know, south of Haiti, all around Jamaica here, I mean, my goodness. And to really put this into perspective, and I don't want to be particularly sounding like an alarmist, but when we look at the season that we have had, two Category 5s and massive impact, I think that it's okay to stay on top of things and realize in the context of prior seasons this season is standing out above and beyond something like 2005. Now, 2005 had Katrina, which had a much higher death toll, unfortunately, than what we have seen this year. Luckily, this year, the death toll has been much smaller. A lot of that has to do with the locations that these hurricanes have hit and the evacuations that took place and a lot of luck. Obviously, with Katrina, a lot of the deaths occurred in New Orleans and in Mississippi from storm surge and the whole levee debacle. All right, so that's a very distinct difference. However, the intensity this year has rivaled, if not surpassed, especially in duration, 2005. We are ahead of that, especially for September here. So this is what the upper ocean heat content looks like today. This is what it looked like 12 years ago. I mean, wow. The Northwest and the Western Caribbean is absolutely astounding, warmer, and more energy available. Even parts of the Gulf of Mexico and just off the Florida coast as well. But this area down here, I mean, that's just absolutely uh, unbelievable. And if you just look back, man, that's what it was. You know, basically uh, 12 years ago, just incredible. And so what does that tell me? You know, how does that matter to you? 
Why should you care about that? Well, October is when the most damaging uh, hurricanes in history over time, the most impacts from your, your strong Category 3s or higher, typically happen in Florida, believe it or not. Andrew, of course, the Labor Day hurricane, not in October, but I'm talking about the overall frequency of your major hurricanes. Florida has that in October, not September. It's October by a slim margin, but they come out of the Caribbean, these troughs come down, and then they turn and they head into Florida, maybe up into the Panhandle, maybe through the Keys, and, and even Cuba and the Bahamas. You think about Hurricane Michelle back in 2001. Google search that, look it up on Wikipedia. Uh, Hurricane Michelle, very close call for South Florida in November of 2001. I was down there for that. Story for another day. But it's coming. We're not done yet. That much I can almost guarantee you. You know, there's never any certainties. But the pattern is going to shift so that we stop the activity out here, probably stop it over here, and then it's going to increase in this area between now and the end of October and probably through November. So this is the year that we need to stay vigilant and not put our hurricane supplies away and say, oh, okay, it's October, football season is upon us, great, the fronts are coming, cooler weather, it's almost Halloween, whatever. All that's fine and dandy, but I need you to stay on top of this stuff, okay? We've got a while to go, and it's already been pretty painful so far. These are just the facts. This is the way it's been, and I want to make sure that people stay aware, all right? So I'm done here in the Outer Banks. This is my last update from Kitty Hawk. And I'll be heading back to Wilmington uh, today and tonight after I pick up all the equipment out here. And then, like I said, over the weekend on Sunday, I get on a plane and fly down to Florida. And we'll see. Do I get that rental at, uh, at Thrifty and go north? Uh, or do I go south and grab all my equipment uh, as planned? You know, so stay tuned. That'll be an interesting fork in the road or not. We shall see. Have yourselves a great rest of your Thursday. Thanks, as always, to uh, to you for listening to me. I appreciate it very much. And uh, that's all I've got for today. I am Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com. Done here on the Outer Banks of North Carolina. Done with Maria, finally. And I'll have more for you tomorrow.